All right, Shalom. We are now live. Let me know when you guys are here. And if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? Got something I want to share with you. I actually did this. There you go. Shalom, Maya. <clears throat> Good. Awesome. David, Courtney, welcome. I recorded this video months ago, and I did it for a particular person. Um, back when the conversation was still open, no debate on the calendar, just conversation. Shalom, shalom. If you guys would, please share this. Let me see if I can share this in group. Okay, you guys. Very good. Welcome, everyone. So, I I originally recorded this on YouTube, but I didn't make it public. I did it for one person. One person, because I thought that person was open to what's being revealed in the codes. But that turned out not to be the case. It turned out, if it doesn't prove that person's position, in other words, they're biased. You have to be, when it comes to codes, you guys, you got to be unbiased. It either is or isn't. I came to that conclusion when I was researching um, the uh, rapture. Okay, so I changed my stance based on what, I, what was being revealed to me in the codes on that. I thought this would be the case. Not so. Didn't matter, as a matter of fact. I was asked for several weeks because I, I told the person, I got codes that, that prove a lunar solar calendar. I need to see it. I got to see it. All right. So I did a video specifically for that person. And you guys, this lit a firestorm. This is why I was came under attack by this person, why I was slandered by this person, tried to tried to hack me. Everything was thrown at me because of this calendar. That's why I said um, weeks ago, this I'm at war with this. It's that important. So um, since I'm not able to, to post anything on YouTube right now, Facebook's the next, next best thing, but, but when I can, I will be posting this on Facebook. So let me cue that up for you. I'm going to share this for the first time publicly. Nobody's seen this except one person. Actually, I take that back. I did share this with two other people here recently. And then that's when I got the idea. I might as well just put this on Facebook. So let me uh, cue this up for you, you guys and share it. I don't think I'm going to be able to see your uh, chat while I play this. So um, 
keep that in mind. Yeah, I was thinking I might be able to look at it on my other computer, but I may not be able to. So hang tight. Let me cue this up for you, and then we'll uh, we'll continue the discussion after this. Here we go. All right, shalom, Peter. This video is for you. Um, I told you I had several code tables um, that I had been working on for, well, you, you said it, going back a couple of years um, on this calendar. And at any time while I was there, you could have looked at these. Uh, it was never a thing. You never wanted to do that. Here's what I feel about that. Um, let's just back up in history. When you contracted, and I know you did because Scott wouldn't have done this. Scott, to search out the calendar, brother, Scott dropped out of my course. He's a good code searcher, but he's still learning even to this day. Scott's only been searching at the most three years. I've been doing this over 15 that's why he came to me to learn the codes. So when you took, you know, at what I look at, and I gotta say it, it's a pretty code. It's in a very, very small area, right? Three digits. But if you notice something about um, Scott's codes, rarely does he go into the plain text, like this one right here that he worked on me when actually there's a lot of information that runs through here that goes with the context of the access term. What you have with Scott's table is instructions from heaven, obviously is his access term, but in an ELS, an ELS, which is a, is a term that's found after the access term, after the subject matter has been established, ELS terms are what you find. He does have the word calendar there at a very loose ELS. And he does have son of Zadok. Yes, that's true. But I'm not convinced, brother, just by looking at an access term and a couple of ELSs with no text to convince me that the Zadok calendar, that's reaching for it. It makes me feel like you're just interested in any code that proves what you believe. And that's, that's a problem. That was a problem for me when I was trying to reconcile pre-trib rapture because, you see, we cannot reconcile the truth until we're willing to step outside of our ego and what we believe to be true and get into a state of, okay, is there a possibility that what I was taught is erroneous? Because if we're in the mindset set that, that we believe what we believe, the truth will not penetrate that. And quite frankly, I don't believe anything that I have is going to make a difference in the first place. So I really feel like I'm wasting my time doing this. When I need to be putting it somewhere else, I'm up to my neck in personal codes, and I don't have time to be teaching or dropping back to teach on the calendar. Okay? So I just want to make that statement. The other thing is nitpicking on words that are synonymous. Like Jeff coming over to my feed the past 24 hours, which he copies and pastes regurgitated information about the word Hodesh and moon are not the same. What we need to understand about this, brother, is they are synonym. It's a synonym. The words are synonymous. And that's a grammatical fact, brother. That is a grammatical fact even to this day. And in all of the Hebrew texts that I look at, anytime the new moon is mentioned, it's Hodeshim or Hodesh. But it's synonymous with month. Think about that, even with natives. When they say, you know, three months ago, what do they say? Three moons ago. What are they talking about? The new moon. The new moon means it's a new month. It is a synonym. That is a grammatical fact. Furthermore, I can find that word as an access term, meaning that Yahuwah encoded that word as an access term in observe the new moon. Shomer Chodeshim, guard the new moons, is an access term. 
let's just go through the ones I have. I told you I have five or six. I think I got two more that not that not worked. This one. Psalm 104.19. In your King James, you'll see the word seasons. But that word is Moedim. And in the Hebrew, Moedim means new moons, Shabbats, feasts. It's any of his set-apart times. And new moon days are, in fact, a set-apart day, brother. We're supposed to observe the new moon every month. Declare it. Blow the shofar. There's even a feast every month. It's a, it's a dinner every month. And this comes from the Bible. On the calendar that you're on, you never observe the new moons. I know you believe that's moon worship, but brother, I could take you to the text and show you where David wrote, wrote about it. The prophets speak about it. David kept the new moons. Did he learn that from Babylon? And I don't I agree with Jeff and what he's been posting on my threads of how the Jews brought back moon worship in the Talmud from Babylon, which is a freaking lie. You go to the Babylonian Talmud, there is nothing in there about changing the calendar at all, brother. Why? Because Daniel preserved that knowledge. They did not go off the calendar until Constantine. That's a historical fact. And in the Constantine Edict, he says, you will no longer observe new moons, Shabbats, counting of weeks. And historically, you can see, this is in the Jerusalem Tal Talmud, that they began to count the Omer. And they changed the calendar at that time. That's when we went on to Hillel's calendar. Yeshua was not on a pagan calendar when he was here. He was on a Roman calendar, and it wasn't the Gregorian, it was the Julian, meaning there were eight days in a week. I know you count your days at day one and day two and day three and all that, and that's the way the Bible does it. But they don't line up with Rome's calendar, ever, and never did. But yours does. There's a problem with that. There's a misunderstanding of what day one and day two is. Again, not understanding the context of what the writer says in Jubilees, and I know this to be true because it was happening to me when I was coming out of the Christianity and trying to keep the Jewish Hillel calendar. And when you keep the Hillel calendar, you know what happens? Every year, you end up with 10 extra days. And I could not figure this out until Yahuwah revealed to me the lunar solar calendar. That's when I could reconcile the days, brother. When you observe the days according to the Bible, there are no ten extra days. That is what the writer in Jubilees in that section is trying to tell you. That if you don't observe the moon and you try to keep a straight count, you're going to end up with ten extra days. reason is because the moon's oscillation is not a circle. It's an ebb and flow like an egg. And the moon does determine the, Mo the Moedim. The Bible says it. I have it as an access term right here. In the book of Isaiah. So Isaiah is pre pre preserving this fact. He is proving and another witness to what it is in Psalm 104.19. The, the moon determines the Moedim. And I, because of the context of this access term, believe the fact that it is a light unto the Gentiles, the nations. It's a signal to us. He didn't reveal his calendar to the Jews. He revealed it to the Hebrews. And this is something he's charged me with. This is a mission he's given me. I'm into the secrets of the Most High. Just like Daniel. Just like any of them that he revealed his secrets to. That's what he's given me. He's called me his anointed to do this work. I don't believe I'm in the wrong here. I believe I was. But I don't believe now because he's confirmed it in my walk. He's protected me. There's a reason he's preserved me, just like he preserved his day, his holy day, in the growth cycle of wheat, brother. I just posted a video, a, a time lapse of wheat growing. And it takes more than 100 days anywhere in the world that you do this. And there's a, there's a grain belt that goes all the way across the planet. 
from our side of it where Nebraska is all the way over to Israel and it's the same green belt meaning it's the same growth cycle it's the same planting season Bart brought up a point in the thread that maybe Israel plants earlier no you don't do that the wheat knows when it's time to be planted if you plant wheat out of season you will not get a harvest I think it's really ironic that on on Shava Oak Jeff posts a picture of green wheat with no grain on it and it's a weed harvest I think you was telling you something brother he was giving you a sign if you have the eyes to see and the understanding to understand wheat cannot be grown in 50 days not even if you plant it earlier it's not gonna come up right it's planted the same time of year every year for 4,000 years the Sun knows it's going forth brother no one has to tell the grain when to be coming up and when to be harvested. It knows. You would designed it that way. So I hope you can do a screenshot and blow it up. I'm trying to get everything into the screen here, but a very small skip. In the book of Isaiah, the moon determines the Moedim. We can see here passage about the Kokavim, the stars. And the reason I have that here because Nibiru is here. I believe that the moon was perturbed. This is why we went from 360 to 365 at some point. And personally, I believe this is what the people in Qumran were trying to reconcile. Because when the perturbation happened, it would have taken a few years for the, for the solar system to equalize. And until that happened, men on earth were trying to reconcile the day. And they were not having a good time of it because it was constantly changing over that period of equalization. It's the secrets that you has revealed to me of how this happened. And he did that to preserve his days. Because Israel had defiled it, and so he hid it. And he preserved the Shavuot, the very most important day to him in the growth cycle of wheat. We just assume that 10 days later they were in the upper room. It doesn't say that in the text. It was actually 60 days later, brother. You have preserved it in the lack of that information be there. Otio, the moon is a signal. This is what I was trying to show in the quadrant to the left side of that table. Jonathan's standing before them. Dealing with Otio, sitting, the top, sitting between the Shabbat and the new moons. It's a signal pointing to the Shabbat and the new moons. That is why Yahuwah design it so so we could keep the calendar brother if you just observe the sun there you can't go outside and tell me what day of the month it is you can tell me what time of the day it is with a sundial but you can't tell me what time of the month it is you can only do that with the moon and you need both of those to reckon the days and the years okay restore is in that verse right there to to you know, preserve, um, it, this is Isaiah where he's talking about a light unto the Gentiles and preserving Israel, a light thing to do, right? It's not. All right. Let's go to the next one. And by the way, I'm not going to go th through this like a regular presentation. I don't have the time to do that, especially just for one person. I'm not even teaching on the calendar right now. This one is the calendar of the Hebrews. And I'll just go through some of the terms here. Lakshana, which is a truncated phrase. Vavs are not needed when it's implied. Lakshana is the calendar. We've got the house of Israel and a signal or a sign. We also have got the moon, Hayirak. We got Hodesh, which is the new moon. Remember that word is synonymous. It means new month, new moon. That happens at the crescent, the building of the moon. Vertical, right in there, sharing the shin in Hodesh is the sun. The sun, moon, and stars play a role in the calendar. We got a mention of the new month here, Lachodesh, in the plain text. I'm going to go read this verse just because it's speaking specifically 
in Isaiah. So I got a plain text confirmation right here. And I want you to take notice of the word. It's Hodesh in the Hebrew. And you can go and look at any Hebrew text. This is going to be the word. The word is put there. Yahuwah allowed it. He also encoded it as an access term to observe the new moon. Hodeshim is the word used there. This is what it says in the English. 46. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, the inner, the gate of the inner court that look toward the east shall be shut the six working days. But on the Sabbath it shall be open, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. So the only time that this gate was open was on Shabbats and new moons, the set-apart days. Shabbats and new moons, it's a set-apart day. If you don't observe new moon as a set-apart day, you end up with 10 extra days. If you had ever taken the time to walk that out with me for just two or three months while I was there, you would see really quickly that you end up with extra days every month. Because why? New moon, new moon days can be either one or two days. It's an oscillation, an ebb and flow. If it's not observed correctly, 10 extra days at the end of the year. Every time. That's Hillel's calendar, by the way. Keeping a Saturday Shabbat. Seven days straight days, no moon observed at all. You end up with 10 extra days every year. This is why they have to intercalate their calendar every year. It's 10 extra days. This compiles over the years. And the Jews admit that 230 to 280 years off because of this. Again, Hillel happened at the, after the time of Yeshua. Before the time of Yeshua, Yeshua kept the traditions of the Hebrews and of his father. He knew the calendar. Oh, this next one. So I've got two that are worked to the point where I'm very convinced. And I really didn't need the codes anyway because all the empirical data that I look at, historical fact, I can find points to this. Okay. But here... In this table, we have the, the words for the lunar calendar as an access term with in the, uh, in the seventh month, Lachodesh being used, synonymous word as month and not moon, because it's not talking about a new moon here. It's talking about the month. So the word is synonymous. We have the word OTO, a signal. OTO, vertical on itself, a signal to who? The congregation of Yehud. We have coming together with the calendar of uh, the lunar calendar, we have the clock, the word the clock pointing to this verse right here. We have Lachodesh and Lachodesh on itself. Here it is again, the new moon crossing there on the Dalad. And again, brother, that is a that is a legitimate term. Yahuwah uses it as an access term, as I'll show you here. Kodeshim Shomer. Guard the new moons. And I didn't get to work on this. I had to, had to file it because I've been too busy over the past couple of years to, to go through every single one of these tables and work them all the way through. Um, I don't need to convince myself. And I didn't think that codes alone was going to convince anybody that I had to have solid teaching. That's why I've been focused on scriptures and what the text says. The codes are just another witness. Guard the new moons. Hodeshim is encoded. You who will put it there, brother? He also put the codes. Israel and Jonathan, Otiot is at the top, Hodeshim over here. So it is encoded. I will work on that table to the fullest and get that information to you. If you still are not convinced, <laughs> this one is the moon is the moon signals. Otiot Hai Irak. 
And again, we have the clock right there. We have the Shari, the remnant in the end of days and the seventh Shabbat, the seventh year, which is a Shemitah. This one also needs to be worked further. Sh uh, Sharit down here. Oh, and I didn't tell you the skips on these. Let's go back to, to this one. This one's 22117. Right here. Chodeshim Shomer. This one here, the lunar calendar is 21210. This one, which is the moon signals, is 10611. Calendar of the Hebrews, 2211. I've been seeing a repeating pattern of 22. And then the one in Isaiah, 224, 224 in the book of Isaiah. The moon determines the Moedim. So that is the tables I have on it. And I still have some that I'm, you know, just thinking of that the Holy Spirit's given me that I haven't even worked to any point, it's just an access term. So, you know, if you're one that takes codes as legitimate, brother, that's my case right there. And the fact that you, you take something, I don't mean no disrespect to Scott, I love Scott. Scott is very talented, brother, but you, you know, you wouldn't go to someone right out of medical school to get your brain worked on, right? You, you want some tenure in that surgeon. It's a beautiful table, but it needs to be worse than plain text running through that or confirming what he's saying. And why is there only one table? I taught Scott to triangulate, to produce multiple tables that are witnesses to one another. So there you go. If there's anything else you need, brother, I'll try to get it to you. I don't know how to do a screenshot on my computer. It doesn't work. This old computer don't do that. I'm... Amazing it's still going. <laughs> but if there's anything else you need, you know, let me know. I'll do what I can. But it is what it is. I knew we were going to have to cross this uh, bridge at some point. I see an abacus effect right there. Yerakim. Which I guess, you know, You guys believe means new moons. It means moons. But there's the word Yerakim right there. And, and this is an abacus effect, by the way. That Yod belongs with the these two letters here. The word there is actually Rachim. All right. Shalom, brother. I, listen, I love you, man. I love you. So that's what I had for him <laughs> several months ago before I left Oregon. And this is what sparked this whole firestorm and why I came under attack because he figured if he could discredit me, he can discredit what I was finding. No, not going to happen. <laughs> you will preserve me for this time. And he's not going to allow, uh, you know, somebody to come along and disrupt what he's trying to do. He's called me to teach his name, to teach his calendar, and to reveal these codes. So uh, this video was for one person, but now it's for everybody. And I will be producing these tables individually on YouTube when I can. It wasn't an issue before, but now it is. Uh, like I said in that video, I didn't need to to convince myself. I was convinced, you guys. 
And if you noticed, I wasn't pushing this on YouTube. I was using scriptures alone, not going really outside the Bible, only using uh, data that confirmed what the Bible was saying, not contradicting what it says. This is a hermeneutical issue. If you are using text that contradicts, first of all, itself, but secondly, the, the Torah, there's an issue with that. I've invited the brother to come dance with me in a Zoom and talk about this debate, whatever you want to call it. But his response was, I don't de debate, I declare. Yeah. It's because you can't debate. You can't debate the facts. It blows you out of the water. When you come at somebody with jubilees alone, and you don't have any kind of scriptures from the Bible to prove your point. I got issues with that, you guys, and you should too. In the last video that I did, <laughs> the last live stream on Facebook, I used Brother Adam's data or presentation, actually not his data, but his presentation from the book of Enoch, chapter 73, where it lays out really clearly the the uh, function of the moon according to the months that we reconcile the new moon coming from the dark moon into the first visible crescent as the head of the month. I find it so fascinating that this same person likes to say that, you know, the, the Qumran um, calendars that were found there, which was actually two calendars, were e from Enoch. Okay, let's go that route. <laughs> Let's look at Enoch, what Enoch said. I, I, here's, right now, I'm putting out this invitation right now. If you got anything, you got anything. And I told him this personally. If you got something that convinces me, guess what? I'll do an about facing, follow you to the end of the world. But if you don't, this is where I'm at. And I expected the same thing from him. I mean, I was led to believe that, that if I produced these codes to him, that it, it was possible it would convict, uh, con well, yeah, convict and convince. But no, that was not the case. You got all it did was infuriate him to the point where he needed to meddle in my life, meddle in my relationships, hack my stuff, and manipulate Oh, what Yahuwah has done in this whole thing, revealing the slippery, the, the slippery, slimy snake that he is, was revealed in all of this. He's not interested in truth at all. Not at all. I just laid out to you like five dis different tables. I found a sixth one today, the calendar of Yah. And guess what it points to? A lunar solar calendar. The Bible interprets itself. It doesn't need me. All I am is a messenger. And I don't have a dog in the fight, by the way. If it if it pointed to a Jubilee calendar or you know, whatever you call it, the Zadok calendar, guess what? I'm all on board. I don't have a dog in the fight. I just want to go with truth. But when you got ego issues. We have a problem. And I think that's what this boils down to. Ego. Don't like to be wrong. Brother, everybody's wrong sometimes. Even you. Even me. I've been wrong. I was teaching a rap pre-trib rapture for like three or four years before I realized, using the codes, that I was wrong. <laughs> and what did I do? I had to go and correct myself. I had to go and correct myself. So if you had any biblical integrity at all, you would correct yourself and start teaching the truth and quit leading people down a false road. Today is not <laughs> the day of atonement. <laughs> that goes by the moon. And that's on the 10th day of the seventh month. We're not there yet. It's still coming. And then five days from that is Shavuot. 
So you are off, brother. I see it. Yahuwah sees it, and everybody else sees it. So I hope this brings wisdom and understanding to those that are watching all of this unfold. Take note of who you follow in you guys. There's some people that are in darkness and are so full of their ego, they can't, they can't identify that. They're thinking they're walking in the light when they're not at all. So this is what I have for you, you guys. When I'm able to post on YouTube again, I'll be putting this up for everybody to see and going through each one of those in depth. I was just skimming through it for this person because I didn't really have time to be addressing that at the time. I'm still working on names codes. I'm not even done with that yet. But the time is coming. We're going to teach this with ferocious veracity because it's the right thing to do. This is where you who is going to unite the Hebrews on the calendar. The common thread of what was going on in the upper room was they were in one mind and in one accord when the spirit was poured out. They were on, were on five different calendars, you guys. They weren't stabbing each other in the back because of the calendar. No, 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 no. Yahuwah's not going to pour out his spirit when that's happening. But when we get it together, when we come into this truth and we are observing his Shabbats in unity, that's when it's going to happen, brother. It's going to be a marvelous thing. Shalom to you. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you always. Shalom.